The Crimean Peninsula was annexed from Ukraine by the Russian Federation in February to March 2014 and since then has been administered as two Russian federal subjects the Republic of Crimea and the federal city of Sevastopol. The annexation was accompanied by a military intervention by Russia in Crimea that took place in the aftermath of the 2014 Ukrainian Revolution and was part of wider unrest across southern and eastern Ukraine. On 22 23 February 2014, Russian President Vladimir Putin convened an all night meeting with security service chiefs to discuss the extrication of deposed Ukrainian President, Viktor Yanukovych. At the end of the meeting, Putin remarked that we must start working on returning Crimea to Russia." On 23 February, pro-Russian demonstrations were held in the Crimean city of Sevastopol. On 27 February masked Russian troops without insignia took over the Supreme Council Parliament of Crimea, and captured strategic sites across Crimea, which led to the installation of the pro-Russian Oksonov government in Crimea, the conducting of the Crimean status referendum and the declaration of Crimea's independence on 16 March 2014. Russia formally incorporated Crimea as two federal subjects of the Russian Federation with effect from 18 March 2014. Ukraine and many world leaders condemn the annexation and consider it to be a violation of international law and Russian signed agreements safeguarding the territorial integrity of Ukraine, including the Beloveza Accords establishing the Commonwealth of Independent States in 1991, the Helsinki Accords, the Budapest Memorandum on Security Assurances of 1994 and the Treaty on Friendship, Cooperation and Partnership between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. It led to the other members of the then G8 suspending Russia from the group, then introducing the first round of sanctions against the country. The United Nations General Assembly also rejected the vote and annexation, adopting a non-binding resolution affirming the "...territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders." The UN resolution also "...underscores that the referendum having no validity, cannot form the basis for any alteration of the status of Crimea." and calls upon all states and international organizations not to recognize or to imply the recognition of Russia's annexation. In 2016, UN General Assembly reaffirmed non-recognition of the annexation and condemned the temporary occupation of part of the territory of Ukraine, the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol. The Russian Federation opposes the annexation label, with Putin defending the referendum as complying with the principle of self-determination of peoples. In July 2015, Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev said that Crimea had been fully integrated into Russia. Background <inaudible> 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 Crimea became part of the Russian Empire in 1783, when the Crimean Khanate was annexed, then became part of the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic until 1954. During the first stages of the Russian Civil War there were a series of short-lived independent governments Crimean People's Republic, Crimean Regional Government, Crimean SSR but they were followed by White Russian Governments General Command of the Armed Forces of South Russia and later South Russian Government. In October 1921, the Crimean Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic of the Russian SFSR was instituted. After the Second World War and the subsequent deportation of all of the indigenous Crimean Tatars, the Crimean ASSR was stripped of its autonomy in 1946 and was downgraded to the status of an oblast of the Russian SFSR. In 1954, the Crimean Oblast was transferred from the Russian SFSR to the Ukrainian SSR by decree of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet of the Soviet Union. In 1989, under perestroika, the Supreme Soviet declared that the deportation of the Crimean Tatars under Stalin had been illegal, and the mostly Muslim ethnic group was allowed to return to Crimea. In 1990, the Soviet of the Crimean Oblast proposed the restoration of the Crimean ASSR. The oblast conducted a referendum in 1991, which asked whether Crimea should be elevated into a signatory of the new Union Treaty that is, became a Union Republic on its own. By that time, though, the dissolution of the Soviet Union was well underway. The Crimean ASSR was restored for less than a year as part of Soviet Ukraine before Ukrainian independence. Newly independent Ukraine maintained Crimea's autonomous status, while the Supreme Council of Crimea affirmed the peninsula's sovereignty as a part of Ukraine. 
The autonomous status of Crimea was limited by Ukrainian authorities in 1995. In September 2008, the Ukrainian Foreign Minister Volodymyr Orozko accused Russia of giving out Russian passports to the population in Crimea and described it as a real problem. Given Russia's declared policy of military intervention abroad to protect Russian citizens, on 24 August 2009, anti-Ukrainian demonstrations were held in Crimea by ethnic Russian residents. Sergei Sekhov of the Russian bloc and then Deputy Speaker of the Crimean Parliament said then that he hoped that Russia would treat Crimea the same way as it had treated South Ossetia and Abkhazia. Crimea is populated by an ethnic Russian majority and a minority of both ethnic Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars, and thus demographically possessed one of Ukraine's largest ethnic Russian populations. Already in 2011, some analysts speculated that the Russian government has irredentist plans. Russia wants to annex Crimea and is merely waiting for the right opportunity, most likely under the pretense of defending Russian brethren abroad. Euromaidan and the Ukrainian Revolution The Euromaidan protest movement began in Kiev in late November 2013 after President Viktor Yanukovych, of the Party of Regions, suspended the signing of the Ukraine-European Union Association Agreement. Yanukovych won the 2010 presidential election with strong support from voters in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and southern and eastern Ukraine. The Crimean Autonomous Government strongly supported Yanukovych and condemned the protests, saying they were "...threatening political stability in the country." The Crimean Autonomous Parliament said that it supported the government's decision to suspend negotiations on the pending association agreement and urged Crimeans to "...strengthen friendly ties with Russian regions." On 4 February 2014, the Presidium of the Supreme Council considered holding a referendum on the peninsula's status, and asked the Russian government to guarantee the vote. The Security Service of Ukraine SBU responded by opening a criminal case to investigate the possible subversion of Ukraine's territorial integrity. On 20 February 2014, during a visit to Moscow, Chairman of the Supreme Council of Crimea Vladimir Konstantinov stated that the 1954 transfer of Crimea from the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic to the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic had been a mistake. The Euromaidan protests came to a head in late February 2014, and Yanukovych and many of his ministers fled the capital on of February. After his flight, opposition parties and defectors from the Party of Regions put together a parliamentary quorum in the Verkhovna Rada the Ukrainian parliament, and voted on of February to remove Yanukovych from his post on the grounds that he was unable to fulfill his duties, although this legislative removal lacked the required three-quarter vote of sitting Rada members according to the constitution in effect at the time, which the Rada also voted to suspend. Arseny Yatsenyuk was appointed by the Rada to serve as the head of a caretaker government until new presidential and parliament elections could be held. This new government was recognized internationally, though the Russian government said that these events had been a coup d'état and that the caretaker government was illegitimate. History Crimean crisis begins The February 2014 revolution that ousted Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych sparked a political crisis in Crimea, which initially manifested as demonstrations against the new interim Ukrainian government, but rapidly escalated. In January 2014 the Sevastopol City Council had already called for formation of ''People's Militia'' units to ''ensure firm defense'' of the city from ''extremism''. Crimean parliament members called for an extraordinary meeting on 21 February. Crimean Tatar Melis chairman Mustafa Jemilev said that he suspected that the meeting was arranged to call for Russian military intervention in Crimea. In response to this, the Security Service of Ukraine SBU said that it would "...use severe measures to prevent any action taken against diminishing the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine." 
The party with the largest number of seats in the Crimean parliament 80 of 100, the Party of Regions of Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych, did not discuss Crimean secession, and were supportive of an agreement between President Yanukovych and Euromaidan activists to end the unrest that was struck on the same day in Kiev. On 22–23 February, Russian President Vladimir Putin convened an all-night meeting with security services chiefs to discuss extrication of the deposed Ukrainian president, Viktor Yanukovych, and at the end of that meeting Putin had remarked that, "...we must start working on returning Crimea to Russia." On 23 February pro-Russian demonstrations were held in the Crimean city of Sevastopol. Crimean Prime Minister Anatoly Mohyliev said that his government recognized the new provisional government in Kiev, and that the Crimean Autonomous Government would carry out all laws passed by the Ukrainian parliament. In Simferopol, a pro-Euromaidan rally of between 5,000 to 15,000 was held in support of the new government, and demanding the resignation of the Crimean parliament, attendees waved Ukrainian, Tatar, and European Union flags. Meanwhile, in Sevastopol, thousands protested against the new Ukrainian government, voted to establish a parallel administration, and created civil defense squads with the support of the Russian Night Wolves Motorcycle Club. Protesters waved Russian flags, chanted. Putin is our president," and said they would refuse to further pay taxes to the Ukrainian state. Russian military convoys were also alleged to be seen in the area. In Kerch, pro-Russian protesters attempted to remove the Ukrainian flag from atop city hall and replace it with the flag of Russia. Over 200 attended, waving Russian, orange and black St. George, and the Russian Unity Party flags. Mayor Ole Osadchi attempted to disperse the crowd and police eventually arrived to defend the flag. The mayor said, This is the territory of Ukraine, Crimea. Here's a flag of Crimea. But was accused of treason and a fight ensued over the flagpole. On 24 February, more rallied outside the Sevastopol city state administration. Pro-Russian demonstrators accompanied by neo-Cossacks demanded the election of a Russian citizen as mayor and hoisted Russian flags around the city administration. They also handed out leaflets to sign up for a self-defense militia, warning that the blue-brown Europlague is knocking. On 25 February, several hundred pro-Russian protesters blocked the Crimean parliament demanding a referendum on Crimea's independence. On the same day, Sevastopol illegally elected Alexei Shaley, a Russian citizen, as mayor. Under the law of Ukraine, it was not possible for Sevastopol to elect a mayor, as the chairman of the Sevastopol City State Administration, appointed by the President of Ukraine, functions as its mayor. A thousand protesters present chanted, A Russian mayor for a Russian city. Crowds gathered again outside Sevastopol City Hall on Tuesday as rumors spread that security forces could arrest Shaley, but police chief Alexander Goncharov said that his officers would refuse to carry out criminal orders issued by Kiev. Viktor Neganov, a Sevastopol-based advisor to the Internal Affairs Minister, condemned the events in the city as a coup. Shaley represents the interests of the Kremlin which likely gave its tacit approval. He said. Sevastopol City State Administration Chairman Vladimir Yatsuba was booed and heckled on 23 February, when he told a pro-Russian rally that Crimea was part of Ukraine. He resigned the next day. In Simferopol, the regional state administration building was blockaded with hundreds of protesters, including neo-Cossacks, demanding a referendum of separation. The rally was organized by the Crimean Front. On 26 February, thousands clashed during opposing rallies in Simferopol. Near the Supreme Council of Crimea building 4,000 and 5,000 Crimean Tatars and supporters of the Euromaidan Crimea movement faced 600 to 700 supporters of pro-Russian organizations and the Russian Unity Party. Supreme Council Chairman Vladimir Konstantinov said that the Crimean Parliament would not consider separation from Ukraine, and that earlier reports that Parliament would hold a debate on the matter were provocations. Tatars created self-defense groups, encouraged collaboration with Russians, Ukrainians, and people of other nationalities, and called for the protection of churches, mosques, synagogues, and other important sites. By nightfall the Crimean Tatars had left, several hundred Russian unity supporters rallied on. The new Ukrainian government's acting internal affairs minister Arsen Avakov tasked Crimean law enforcement agencies not to provoke conflicts and to do whatever necessary to prevent clashes with pro-Russian forces, and he added, I think, that way, through a dialogue, we shall achieve much more than with standoffs. 
New Security Service of Ukraine SBU Chief Valentin Nalavychenko requested that the United Nations provide around-the-clock monitoring of the security situation in Crimea. Russian troops took control of the main route to Sevastopol on orders from Russian President Vladimir Putin. A military checkpoint, with a Russian flag and Russian military vehicles, was set up on the main highway between the city and Simferopol. On 27 February, Russian special forces seized the building of the Supreme Council of Crimea and the building of the Council of Ministers in Simferopol. Russian flags were raised over these buildings, and barricades were erected outside them. Whilst the little green men were occupying the Crimean Parliament building, the Parliament held an emergency session. It voted to terminate the Crimean government, and replace Prime Minister Anatoly Mohyliev with Sergei Aksonov. Aksonov belonged to the Russian Unity Party, which received 4% of the vote in the last election. According to the Constitution of Ukraine, the Prime Minister of Crimea is appointed by the Supreme Council of Crimea in consultation with the President of Ukraine. Both Oksonov and Speaker Vladimir Konstantinov stated that they viewed Viktor Yanukovych as the de jure president of Ukraine, through whom they were able to ask Russia for assistance. The parliament also voted to hold a referendum on greater autonomy set for 25 May. The troops had cut all of the building's communications, and took EMS phones as they entered. No independent journalists were allowed inside the building while the votes were taking place. Some MPs said they were being threatened and that votes were cast for them and other MPs, even though they were not in the chamber. Interfax Ukraine reported, It is impossible to find out whether all the 64 members of the 100-member legislature who were registered as present at when the two decisions were voted on or whether someone else used the plastic voting cards of some of them. Because due to the armed occupation of parliament it was unclear how many MPs were present. The head of Parliament's Information and Analysis Department, Olha Solnikova, had phoned from inside the parliamentary building to journalists and had told them 61 of the registered 64 deputies had voted for the referendum resolution and 55 for the resolution to dismiss the government. Donetsk People's Republic separatist Igor Gherkin said in January 2015 that Crimean members of Parliament were held at gunpoint, and were forced to support the annexation. These actions were immediately declared illegal by the Ukrainian interim government. On the same day, more troops in unmarked uniforms, assisted this time by what appeared to be local Burkitt riot police as well as Russian troops from the 31st Separate Airborne Assault Brigade dressed in Burkitt uniforms, established security checkpoints on the Isthmus of Perikop and the Chanhar Peninsula, which separate Crimea from the Ukrainian mainland. Within hours, Ukraine had effectively been cut off from Crimea. On 1 March 2014, Oksonov declared Crimea's new de facto authorities would exercise control of all Ukrainian military installations on the peninsula. He also asked Russian President Vladimir Putin, who had been Yanukovych's primary international backer and guarantor, for assistance in ensuring peace and public order in Crimea. Putin promptly received authorization from the Federation Council of Russia for a Russian military intervention in Ukraine until normalization of a socio-political environment in the country." Putin's swift maneuver prompted protests of intelligentsia and demonstrations in Moscow against a Russian military campaign in Crimea. By 2 March, Russian troops moving from the country's naval base in Sevastopol and reinforced by troops, armor, and helicopters from mainland Russia exercised complete control over the Crimean Peninsula. Russian troops operated in Crimea without insignia. On 4 March Ukrainian general staff claimed there are units of 18th Motor Rifle Brigade, 31st Air Assault Brigade and 22nd Spetsnaz Brigade deployed and operating in Crimea instead of Russian Black Sea Fleet personnel, which violates international agreements signed by Ukraine and Russia. Despite numerous media reports and statements by the Ukrainian and foreign governments describing the unmarked troops as Russian soldiers, government officials concealed the identity of their forces, claiming they were local self-defense units over whom they had no authority. As late as 17 April, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov said that there were no spare armed forces in the territory of Crimea. Russian officials eventually admitted to their troops' presence. On 17 April 2014, Putin acknowledged the Russian military-backed Crimean separatist militias, stating that Russia's intervention was necessary to ensure proper conditions for the people of Crimea to be able to freely express their will. 
Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu said the country's military actions in Crimea were undertaken by forces of the Black Sea Fleet and were justified by threat to lives of Crimean civilians and danger of takeover of Russian military infrastructure by extremists. Ukraine complained that by increasing its troop presence in Crimea, Russia violated the agreement under which it headquartered its Black Sea Fleet in Sevastopol and violated the country's sovereignty. The United States and United Kingdom also accused Russia of breaking the terms of the Budapest Memorandum on Security Assurances, by which Russia, the US, and the UK had reaffirmed their obligation to refrain from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of Ukraine. The Russian government said the Budapest Memorandum did not apply due to "...complicated internal processes." in Crimea. In March 2015 retired Russian Admiral Igor Kasashinov stated that according to his information the Russian troop deployment in Crimea included six helicopter landings and three landings of IL-76 with 500 people. <laughs> <laughs> Legal issues surrounding Crimean annexation The Russian-Ukrainian Partition Treaty on the Status and Conditions of the Black Sea Fleet signed in 1997 and prolonged in 2010, determined the status of the military bases and vessels in Crimea prior to the crisis. Russia was allowed to maintain up to 25,000 troops, 24 artillery systems with a caliber smaller than 100 mm, 132 armored vehicles, and 22 military planes, on military base in Sevastopol and related infrastructure on the Crimean Peninsula. The Russian Black Sea Fleet had basing rights in Crimea until 2042. Usage of navigation stations and troop movements were improperly covered by the treaty and were violated many times as well as related court decisions. February troop movements were in complete disregard of the treaty. Both Russia and Ukraine are signatories to the Charter of the United Nations. The ratification of said charter has several ramifications in terms of international law, particularly those that cover the subjects of declarations of independence, sovereignty, self-determination, acts of aggression, and humanitarian emergencies. Vladimir Putin said that Russian troops in the Crimean Peninsula were aimed to ensure proper conditions for the people of Crimea to be able to freely express their will. Whilst Ukraine and other nations argue that such intervention is a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty, Russia, United States, United Kingdom and Ukraine also signed the Budapest Memorandum on Security Assurances, by which all these countries reaffirmed their obligation to respect the territorial integrity of Ukraine including Crimea and to refrain from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of Ukraine. According to the Constitution of Russia, the admission of new federal subjects is governed by federal constitutional law Art. Such a law was adopted in 2001, and it postulates that admission of a foreign state or its part into Russia shall be based on a mutual accord between the Russian Federation and the relevant state and shall take place pursuant to an international treaty between the two countries. Moreover, it must be initiated by the state in question, not by its subdivision or by Russia. On the 28th of February 2014, Russian MP Sergei Miranov, along with other members of the Duma, introduced a bill to alter Russia's procedure for adding federal subjects. According to the bill, accession could be initiated by a subdivision of a country, provided that there is absence of efficient sovereign state government in foreign state. The request could be made either by subdivision bodies on their own or on the basis of a referendum held in the subdivision in accordance with corresponding national legislation. On the 11th of March 2014, both the Supreme Council of Crimea and the Sevastopol City Council adopted a declaration of independence, which stated their intent to declare independence and request full accession to Russia should the pro-Russian option receive the most votes during the scheduled status referendum. The declaration directly referred to the Kosovo independence precedent, by which the Albanian populated autonomous province of Kosovo and Metohija declared independence from Russia's ally Serbia as the Republic of Kosovo in 2008 a unilateral action Russia staunchly opposed. Many analysts saw the Crimean Declaration as an overt effort to pave the way for Crimea's annexation by Russia. Crimean authorities stated plans to declare independence from Ukraine made the Miranov bill unnecessary. On 20 March 2014, two days after the Treaty of Accession was signed, the bill was withdrawn by its initiators. At its meeting on 21 to 22 March, the Venice Commission stated that the Miranov bill violated 
In particular, the principles of territorial integrity, national sovereignty, non-intervention in the internal affairs of another state and pacta sunt servanda", and was therefore incompatible with international law. Crimean status referendum On 27 February 2014, following the takeover of its building by Russian special forces, the Supreme Council of Crimea voted to hold a referendum on 25 May, with the initial question as to whether Crimea should upgrade its autonomy within Ukraine. The referendum date was later moved from 25 May to 30 March. A Ukrainian court declared the referendum to be illegal. On 4 March, Russian President Vladimir Putin said Russia was not considering annexing Crimea. He said of the peninsula that, "...only citizens themselves, in conditions of free expression of will and their security can determine their future." Putin later acknowledged that he had ordered, "...work to bring Crimea back into Russia," as early as February. He also acknowledged that in early March there were, "...secret opinion polls." held in Crimea, which, according to him, reported overwhelming popular support for Crimea's incorporation into Russia. On 6 March, the Supreme Council moved the referendum date to 16 March and changed its scope to ask a new question, whether Crimea should accede to Russia or restore the 1992 constitution within Ukraine, which the Ukrainian government had previously invalidated. This referendum, unlike one announced earlier, contained no option to maintain the status quo of governance under the 1998 constitution. Ukraine's then acting president, Oleksandr Turchinov, stated that the authorities in Crimea are totally illegitimate, both the parliament and the government. They are forced to work under the barrel of a gun and all their decisions are dictated by fear and are illegal. On 14 March, the Crimean status referendum was deemed unconstitutional by the Constitutional Court of Ukraine, and a day later, the Verkhovna Rada formally dissolved the Crimean parliament. The referendum was held despite the opposition from the Ukrainian government. Official results reported about 95% of participating voters in Crimea were in favor of Russian annexation of Crimea. The results of referendum were questioned. Another report by Yevgeny Bobrov, a member of the Russian President's Human Rights Council, suggested the official results were inflated and only 15% to 30% of Crimeans eligible to vote actually voted for the Russian option. The means by which the referendum was conducted were widely criticized by foreign governments and in the Ukrainian and international press, with reports that anyone holding a Russian passport, regardless of residency in Crimea, was allowed to vote. After the OSCE refused to send observers Russia invited a group of observers from various European far-right political parties aligned with Putin, who stated the referendum was conducted in a free and fair manner. Breakaway Republic On 17 March, following the official announcement of the referendum results, the Supreme Council of Crimea declared the formal independence of the Republic of Crimea, comprising the territories of both the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol, which was granted special status within the Breakaway Republic. The Crimean Parliament declared the partial repeal of Ukrainian laws and began nationalizing private and Ukrainian state property located on the Crimean Peninsula, including Ukrainian ports and property of Chornomornaftogas. Parliament also formally requested that the Russian government admit the breakaway republic into Russia. On same day, the de facto Supreme Council renamed itself the State Council of Crimea, declared the Russian ruble an official currency alongside the hryvnia, and announced that Crimea would switch to Moscow time (UTC +4) on the 30th of March. Putin officially recognized the Republic of Crimea as a sovereign and independent state by decree and approved the admission of the Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol as separate federal subjects of Russia. Topic: Accession Treaty. The Treaty on Accession of the Republic of Crimea to Russia was signed between representatives of the Republic of Crimea including Sevastopol, with which the rest of Crimea briefly unified and the Russian Federation on 18 March 2014 to lay out terms for the immediate admission of the Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol as federal subjects of Russia and part of the Russian Federation. It was ratified by the Federal Assembly by 21 March, during a controversial incident in Simferopol on 18 March. Some Ukrainian sources said that armed gunmen that were reported to be Russian special forces allegedly stormed the base. 
This was contested by Russian authorities, who subsequently announced the arrest of an alleged Ukrainian sniper in connection with the killings, but later denied the arrest had occurred. The two casualties had a joint funeral attended by both the Crimean and Ukrainian authorities, and both the Ukrainian soldier and Russian paramilitary self defense volunteer were mourned together. The incident is now under investigation by both the Crimean authorities and the Ukrainian military. On the 19th of March, President Putin submitted a treaty on Crimea's annexation by Russia and a constitutional amendment to set up two new federal subjects of the Russian Federation to the State Duma. The Russian Constitutional Court found that treaty is in compliance with the Constitution of Russia. The court sat in an emergency session following a formal request by President Vladimir Putin to assess the constitutionality of the treaty. After the Russian Constitutional Court upheld the constitutionality of the treaty, the State Duma ratified it on the 20th of March. The Duma also approved the draft federal constitutional law admitting Crimea and Sevastopol and establishing them as federal subjects. A Just Russia's Ilya Ponomarev was the only State Duma member to vote against the measures. A day later, the treaty itself and the required amendment to Article 65 of the Russian Constitution which lists the federal subjects of Russia were ratified by the Federation Council and almost immediately signed into law by Putin. Crimea's admission to the Russian Federation was considered retroactive to 18 March, when Putin and Crimean leaders signed the draft treaty. Topic. Subsequent events On 24 March, the Ukrainian government ordered the full withdrawal of all of its armed forces from Crimea. In addition, the Ministry of Defense announced that approximately 50% of the Ukrainian soldiers in Crimea had defected to the Russian military. On 27 March, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a non binding resolution, which declared the Crimean referendum and subsequent status change invalid. By a vote of 100 to 11, with 58 abstentions and 24 absent, Crimea and Sevastopol switched to Moscow time at the end of March. On 2 April, Russia formally denounced the 2010 Kharkiv. Pact and Partition Treaty on the Status and Conditions of the Black Sea Fleet. Putin cited, "...the accession of the Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol into Russia," and resulting, "...practical end of renting relationships," as his reason for the denunciation. On the same day, he signed a decree formally rehabilitating the Crimean Tatars, who were ousted from their lands in 1944, and the Armenian, German, Greek, and Bulgarian minority communities in the region that Stalin also ordered removed in the 1940s. On the 11th of April, the Constitution of the Republic of Crimea and City Charter of Sevastopol were adopted, in addition the new federal subjects were enumerated in a newly published revision of the Russian Constitution. On 14 April, Vladimir Putin announced that he would open a ruble-only account with Bank Rossiya and would make it the primary bank in the newly annexed Crimea as well as giving the right to service payments on Russia's $36 billion wholesale electricity market, which gave the bank $112 million annually from commission charges alone. In July 2015, Russian Prime Minister, Dmitry Medvedev, declared that Crimea had been fully integrated into Russia. Until 2016 these new subjects were grouped in the Crimean Federal District. On 8 August 2016, Ukraine reported that Russia had increased its military presence along the demarcation line. In response to this military buildup Ukraine also deployed more troops and resources closer to the border with Crimea. The Pentagon has downplayed a Russian invasion of Ukraine, calling Russian troops along the border a regular military exercise. On 10 August, Russia claimed two servicemen were killed in clashes with Ukrainian commandos, and that Ukrainian servicemen had been captured with a total of 40 kilograms of explosives in their possession. Ukraine denied that the incident took place. Russian accounts claimed that Russian FSB detained Ukrainian saboteurs and terrorists near Armyansk. The ensuing gunfight left one FSB officer and a suspect dead. A number of individuals were detained, including Yevon Panov, who is described by Russian sources as a Ukrainian military intelligence officer and leader of the sabotage group. The group was allegedly planning terror attacks on important infrastructure in Armyansk, Crimea. Ukrainian media reported that Panov was a military volunteer fighting in the east of the country, however he has more recently been associated with a charitable organization. Russia also claimed that the alleged border infiltration was accompanied by heavy fire from Ukrainian territory, resulting in the death of a Russian soldier. 
Ukrainian government called the Russian accusations cynical and senseless and argued that since Crimea was Ukrainian territory, it was Russia which has been generously financing and actively supporting terrorism on Ukrainian territory. In 2017, a survey performed by the Center for East European and International Studies showed indeed that 86% of the respondents believe that if the referendum would be held again it would lead to the same results. Crimea was fully integrated into the Russian media sphere, and links with the rest of Ukraine were hardly existent. On 26 November 2018, lawmakers in the Ukraine parliament overwhelmingly backed the imposition of martial law along Ukraine's coastal regions and those bordering Russia in response to the firing upon and seizure of Ukrainian naval ships by Russia near the Crimean Peninsula a day earlier. A total of 276 lawmakers in Kiev backed the measure, which takes effect on 28 November 2018 and will automatically expire in 30 days. Transition and aftermath Economic implications The number of tourists visiting Crimea in the 2014 season was lower than in the previous years due to a combination of Western sanctions, ethical objections by Ukrainians, and the difficulty of getting there for Russians. The Russian government attempted to stimulate the flow of tourists by subsidizing holidays in the peninsula for children and state workers from all Russia which worked mostly for state-owned hotels. In 2015 overall 3 million tourists visited Crimea according to official data, while before annexation it was around 5.5 million on average. The shortage is attributed mostly to stopped flow of tourists from Ukraine. Hotels and restaurants are also experiencing problems with finding enough seasonal workers, who were arriving from Ukraine mostly in the preceding years. Tourists visiting state-owned hotels are complaining mostly about low standard of rooms and facilities, some of them unrepaired from Soviet times. According to the German newspaper Die Welt, the annexation of Crimea is economically disadvantageous for the Russian Federation. Russia will have to spend billions of euros a year to pay salaries and pensions. Moreover, Russia will have to undertake costly projects to connect Crimea to the Russian water supply and power system because Crimea has no land connection to Russia and at present 2014 gets water, gas and electricity from mainland Ukraine. This requires building a bridge and a pipeline across the Kerch Strait. Also, Novonite claims that a Ukrainian expert told Die Welt that Crimea will not be able to attract tourists. The first deputy to Minister of Finance of Russian Federation Tatyana Nesterenko said in her interview to Forbes Woman that the decision to annex Crimea was made by Russian President Vladimir Putin exclusively, without consulting Russia's finance ministry. The Russian business newspaper Kommersant expresses an opinion that Russia will not acquire anything economically from accessing Crimea, which is not very developed industrially, having just a few big factories, and whose yearly gross product is only $4 billion. The newspaper also says that everything from Russia will have to be delivered by sea, higher costs of transportation will result in higher prices for everything, and to avoid a decline in living standards Russia will have to subsidize Crimean people for a few months. In total, Kommersant estimates the costs of integrating Crimea into Russia in $30 billion over the next decade, i.e. $3 billion per year. On the other hand, Western oil experts estimate that Russia's seizing of Crimea, and the associated control of an area of Black Sea more than three times its land area gives it access to oil and gas reserves potentially worth trillions of dollars. It also deprives Ukraine of its chances of energy independence. Most immediately however, analysts said, Moscow's acquisition may alter the route along which the South Stream pipeline would be built, saving Russia money, time and engineering challenges. It would also allow Russia to avoid building in Turkish territorial waters, which was necessary in the original route to avoid Ukrainian territory. This pipeline was later cancelled in favor of Turkstream, however. Russian, Chechen businessman Ruslan Baisarov announced he is ready to invest 12 billion rubles into the construction of a modern sea resort in Crimea, which is expected to create about 1,300 jobs. Ramzan Kadyrov, the head of Chechnya, said that other Chechen businessmen are planning to invest into Crimea as well. The Russian Federal Service for Communications Roskomnadzor warned about a transition period as Russian operators have to change the numbering capacity and subscribers. Country code will be replaced from the Ukrainian plus 380 to Russian plus 7. Codes in Crimea start with 65, but in the area of 7, 
The 6 is given to Kazakhstan which shares former Soviet Union plus 7 with Russia, so city codes have to change. The regulator assigned 869 dialing code to Sevastopol and the rest of the peninsula received a 365 code. At the time of the unification with Russia, telephone operators and Internet service providers in Crimea and Sevastopol are connected to the outside world through the territory of Ukraine. Minister of Communications of Russia, Nikolai Nikifarov announced on his Twitter account that postal codes in Crimea will now have six figures, to the existing five-digit number the number two will be added at the beginning. For example, the Simferopol postal code 95000 will become 295,000. Regarding Crimea's borders, the head of Russian Federal Agency for the Development of the State Border Facilities, Roskronitsa, Konstantin Busigin, who was speaking at a meeting led by Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin in Simferopol, the capital of Crimea, said the Russian state border in the north of Crimea, which, according to his claims, now forms part of the Russian Ukrainian border, will be fully equipped with the necessary facilities. In the area that now forms the border between Crimea and Ukraine mining the Salt Lake inlets from the sea that constitute the natural borders, and in the spit of land left over stretches of no man's land with wire on either side was created. On early June that year Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev signed a government resolution 961 dated 5 June 2014 establishing air, sea, road and railway checkpoints. The adopted decisions create a legal basis for the functioning of a checkpoint system at the Russian state border in the Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol. In the year following the annexation, armed men seized various Crimean businesses, including banks, hotels, shipyards, farms, gas stations, a bakery, a dairy, and Yalta Film Studio. Russian media have noted this trend as returning to the 90s which is perceived as a period of anarchy and rule of gangs in Russia. In 2015 the Investigative Committee of Russia announced about a number of theft and corruption cases in infrastructure projects in Crimea, for example spending that exceeded the actual accounted costs three times. A number of Russian officials were also arrested for corruption, including head of federal tax inspection, according to February 2016 official Ukrainian figures after Russia's annexation 10% of security service of Ukraine personnel left Crimea, accompanied by 6,000 of the pre-annexation 20,300 people strong Ukrainian army, as a result of the Crimea unsettled status Russian mobile operators never expanded their operations on its territory and all mobile services are offered on the basis of internal roaming, which caused significant controversy inside Russia. Telecoms however argued that expanding coverage to Crimea will put them at risk of Western sanctions and, as a result, they will lose access to key equipment and software, none of which is produced locally. <laughs> Human rights situation In March 2014, Human Rights Watch reported that pro-Ukrainian activists and journalists had been attacked, abducted, and tortured. Some Crimeans were simply disappeared with no explanation. On the 9th of May 2014, the new anti-extremist amendment to the Criminal Code of Russia, passed in December 2013, came into force. Article 280.1 designated incitement of violation of territorial integrity of the Russian Federation INCL, calls for secession of Crimea from Russia as a criminal offense in Russia, punishable by a fine of 300,000 rubles or imprisonment up to three years. If such statements are made in public media or the Internet, the punishment could be obligatory works up to 480 hours or imprisonment up to five years. Following the annexation of Crimea, according to report released on the Russian government run President of Russia's Council on Civil Society and Human Rights website, Tatars who were opposed to Russian rule have been persecuted, Russian law restricting freedom of speech has been imposed, and the new pro Russian authorities liquidated the Kiev Patriarchate Orthodox Church on the peninsula. The Crimean Tatar television station was also shut down by the Russian authorities. After the annexation, on 16 May, the new Russian authorities of Crimea issued a ban on the annual commemorations of the anniversary of the deportation of the Crimean Tatars by Stalin in 1944, citing possibility of provocation by extremists as a reason. Previously, when Crimea was controlled by Ukraine, these commemorations had taken place every year. The pro-Russian Crimean authorities also banned Mustafa Jemilev, a human rights activist, Soviet dissident, member of the Ukrainian parliament, and former chairman of the Melis of the Crimean Tatars from entering Crimea. 
Additionally, Mellis reported, that officers of Russia's Federal Security Service FSB raided Tatar homes in the same week, on the pretense of "...suspicion of terrorist activity." The Tatar community eventually did hold commemorative rallies in defiance of the ban. In response, Russian authorities flew helicopters over the rallies in an attempt to disrupt them. In May 2015, a local activist, Alexander Kostenko, was sentenced to four years in a penal colony. His lawyer, Dmitry Sotnikov, said that the case was fabricated and that his client had been beaten and starved. Crimean prosecutor Natalia Poklonskaya announced that they were judging not just Kostenko, but the very idea of fascism and Nazism, which are trying to raise their head once again. Sotnikov responded that, there are fabricated cases in Russia, but rarely such humiliation and physical harm. A living person is being tortured for a political idea, to be able to boast winning over fascism. Quote, in June 2015, Razum released a report compiling human rights abuses in Crimea. In its 2016 annual report, the Council of Europe made no mention of human rights abuses in Crimea because Russia had not allowed its monitors to enter. In December 2016, the United Nations General Assembly voted on a resolution on human rights in occupied Crimea. It called on the Russian Federation to take all measures necessary to bring an immediate end to all abuses against residents of Crimea, in particular reported discriminatory measures and practices, arbitrary detentions, torture and other cruel, inhumane or degrading treatment, and to revoke all discriminatory legislation. Quote, it also urged Russia to immediately release Ukrainian citizens who were unlawfully detained and judged without regard for elementary standards of justice according to the United Nations and multiple NGOs the Russian Federation is responsible for multiple human rights abuses including torture arbitrary detention forced disappearances and instances of discrimination including persecution of Crimean Tatars in Crimea since the illegal annexation on June 12 2018 Ukraine lodged a memorandum weighing about 90 kilograms consisting of seven 17,500 pages of text in 29 volumes to the UN's International Court of Justice about racial discrimination by Russian authorities in occupied Crimea and state financing of terrorism by Russian Federation in Donbass. Topic: <laughs> Crimean public opinion. A joint survey by American government agency Broadcasting Board of Governors and polling firm Gallup was taken during April 2014. It polled 500 residents of Crimea. The survey found that 82.8% of those polled believed that the results of the Crimean status referendum reflected the views of most Crimeans, whereas 6.7% said that it did not. 73.9% of those polled said that they thought that the annexation would have a positive impact on their lives, whereas 5.5% said that it would not, 13.6% said that they did not know. A comprehensive poll released on 8 May 2014 by the Pew Research Center surveyed Crimean opinions on the annexation. Despite international criticism of the 16th of March referendum on Crimean status, 91% of those Crimeans polled thought that the vote was free and fair, and 88% said that the Ukrainian government should recognize the results. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ukrainian response. Immediately after the Treaty of Accession was signed in March, the Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs summoned the Provisional Principal of Russia in Ukraine to present note verbal of protest against Russia's recognition of the Republic of Crimea and its subsequent annexation. Two days later, the Verkhovna Rada condemned the treaty and called Russia's actions, a gross violation of international law. The Rada called on the international community to avoid recognition of the so called Republic of Crimea or the annexation of Crimea and Sevastopol by Russia as new federal subjects. On 15 April 2014, the Verkhovna Rada declared the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol to be under «provisional occupation» by the Russian military and imposed travel restrictions on Ukrainians visiting Crimea. The territories were also deemed «inalienable parts of Ukraine» subject to Ukrainian law. Among other things, the special law approved by the Rada restricted foreign citizens' movements to and from the Crimean Peninsula and forbade certain types of entrepreneurship. The law also forbade activity of government bodies formed in violation of Ukrainian law and designated their acts as null and void. 
The law had little to no actual effect in Crimea itself due to the mutual non-recognition between Kiev and Simferopol. Ukrainian authorities greatly reduced the volume of water flowing into Crimea via the North Crimean Canal due to huge debt for water supplied in previous year, threatening the viability of the peninsula's agricultural crops, which are heavily dependent on irrigation. The Ukrainian National Council for TV and Radio Broadcasting has instructed all cable operators on the 11th of March to stop transmitting a number of Russian channels, including the international versions of the main state-controlled stations, Rossiya 1, Channel 1 and NTV, as well as news channel Rossiya cable operators on. They said that this is because of Russian media showing them in a negative light. In March 2014, activists began organizing flash mobs in supermarkets to urge customers not to buy Russian goods and to boycott Russian gas stations, banks, and concerts. In April 2014, some cinemas in Kiev, Lviv, and Odessa began shunning Russian films. On the 2nd of December 2014, the Ministry of Information Policy was created with one of its goals being, according to First Minister of Information Yuri Stets, to counteract Russian information aggression. In December 2014, Ukraine halted all train and bus services to Crimea. On the 16th of September 2015, the Ukrainian parliament voted for the law that sets the 20th of February 2014 as the official date of the Russian temporary occupation of Crimean Peninsula. On the 7th of October 2015, the president of Ukraine signed the law into force. The Ministry of Temporarily Occupied Territories and IDPs was established by Ukrainian government on the 20th of April 2016 to manage occupied parts of Donetsk, Luhansk, and Crimea regions affected by Russian military intervention of 2014. Topic: <laughs> Russian response. In a poll published on 24 February by the state-owned Russian Public Opinion Research Center, only 15% of those Russians polled said yes to the question, should Russia react to the overthrow of the legally elected authorities in Ukraine? The State Duma Committee on Commonwealth of Independent States Affairs, headed by Leonid Slutsky, visited Simferopol on 25 February 2014 and said, if the Parliament of the Crimean Autonomy or its residents express the wish to join the Russian Federation, Russia will be prepared to consider this sort of application. We will be examining the situation and doing so fast." They also stated that in the event of a referendum for Crimea region joining Russian Federation they would consider its results. Very fast. Later Slutsky announced that he was misunderstood by Crimean press and no decision regarding simplifying the process of acquiring Russian citizenship for people in Crimea has been made yet. And added that if, "...fellow Russian citizens are in jeopardy you understand that we do not stay away." On 25 February, in a meeting with Crimean politicians he stated that Viktor Yanukovych was still the legitimate president of Ukraine. That same day in the Russian Duma, they announced they were determining measures so that Russians in Ukraine who did not want to break from the Russian world could acquire Russian citizenship. On 26 February, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered the Russian armed forces to be put on alert in the Western Military District as well as units stationed with the 2nd Army Central Military District Command involved in aerospace defense, airborne troops and long-range military transport. Despite media speculation it was for in reaction to the events in Ukraine Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu said it was in separate consideration from the unrest in Ukraine. On 27 February 2014, the Russian government dismissed accusations about violation by the Russian side of the basic agreements in regards of the Black Sea Fleet. All movements of armored vehicles are undertaken in full compliance with the basic agreements and did not require any approvals. On 27 February, the Russian governing agencies presented the new law project on granting citizenship. The Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs called on the West and particularly NATO to abandon the provocative statements and respect the neutral status of Ukraine. In its statement the ministry claims that agreement on settlement of the crisis which was signed on 21 February and was witnessed by foreign ministries from Germany, Poland and France has to this date, not been implemented Vladimir Lukin from Russia had not signed it. On 28 February, according to Itar TASS, the Russian Ministry of Transport discontinued its further talks with Ukraine in regards to the Crimean Bridge project. 
However, on 3 March Dmitry Medvedev, the Prime Minister of Russia, signed a decree creating a subsidiary of Russian highways Avtodor to build a bridge at an unspecified location along the Kerch Strait. On Russian social networks there is a movement to gather volunteers who served in the Russian army to go to Ukraine. On 28 February President Putin stated it was of extreme importance of not allowing a further escalation of violence and the necessity of a rapid normalization of the situation in Ukraine." In telephone calls with key EU leaders. Already on 19 February the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs referred to the Euromaidan Revolution as the Brown Revolution. The Federation Council approved that Russia may introduce a limited contingent of Russian troops in Crimea for the security of the Black Sea Fleet and the Russians. In Moscow, on 2 March, an estimated 27,000 rallied in support of the Russian government's decision to intervene in Ukraine. The rallies received considerable attention on Russian state TV and were officially sanctioned by the government. Meanwhile, on 1 March, five people who were picketing next to the Federation Council building against the invasion of Ukraine were arrested. The next day about 200 people protested at the building of the Russian Ministry of Defense in Moscow against Russian military involvement. About 500 people also gathered to protest on the Menesnaya Square in Moscow and the same number of people on the St. Isaac Square in St. Petersburg. On 2 March, about 11 protesters demonstrated in Yekaterinburg against Russian involvement, with some wrapped in the Ukrainian flag. Protests were also held in Chelyabinsk on the same day. The opposition to the military intervention was also expressed by rock musician Andrei Makarevich, who wrote in particular, You want war with Ukraine? It will not be the way it was with Abkhazia. The folks on the Maiden have been hardened and know what they are fighting for, for their country, their independence. We have to live with them. Still neighborly. And preferably in friendship. But it's up to them how they want to live. The professor of the Department of Philosophy at the Moscow State Institute of International Relations Andrei Zubov was fired for his article in Vidomosti, criticizing Russian military intervention. On 2 March, one Moscow resident protested against Russian intervention by holding, Stop the war! banner, but he was immediately harassed by passers-by and when the police was arresting him, a woman offered them fabricating a serious charge beating up a child against him, however, the proposal was rejected by the police. Andrei Zubov, a professor at the Moscow State Institute of International Relations, who compared Russian actions in Crimea to the Anschluss of Austria, was threatened. Akhexander Chuyev, the leader of the pro-Kremlin Spravlovaya Russia party, also objected to Russian intervention in Ukraine. Boris Akunin, popular Russian writer, predicted that Russia's moves would lead to political and economic isolation. President Putin's approval rating among the Russian public has increased by nearly 10% since the crisis began, up to 71.6%, the highest in three years, according to a poll conducted by the All-Russian Center for Public Opinion Research, released on 19 March. Additionally, the same poll showed that more than 90% of Russians supported unification with the Crimean Republic. On 4 March, at press conference in Novo Ogaryovo, President Putin expressed his view on the situation that if a revolution took place in Ukraine, it is a new country with which Russia did not conclude any treaties. He brought up an analogy with events of 1917 in Russia, when as a result of the revolution the Russian Empire fell apart and a new state was created. However, he stated Ukraine would still have to honor its debts. Russian politicians have speculated that there are already 143,000 Ukrainian refugees in Russia. The Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs refuted those claims of refugees increase in Russia. At a briefing on 4 March 2014, the Director of Department of Information Policy of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine Yevon Perebyanis said that Russia was misinforming its own citizens as well as the entire international community to justify its own actions in the Crimea. On 5 March, an anchor of the Russian-owned international news channel RT America, Abby Martin, in an interview with Piers Morgan, said she did not agree with how her employer RT was covering the Ukrainian crisis, but claims RT still supports her despite her differences of opinion. Also on 5 March 2014, another RT America anchor, Liz Wall, of the network's Washington, D.C. Bureau, resigned on air, explaining that she could not be part of a network that whitewashes the actions of Putin. 
and citing her Hungarian ancestry and the memory of the Soviet repression of the Hungarian uprising as a factor in her decision. In early March, Igor Andreev, a 75 year old survivor of the Siege of Leningrad, attended an anti war rally against the Russian intervention in Crimea and was holding a sign that read, Peace to the World. The riot police arrested him and a local pro government lawyer then accused him of being a supporter of fascism. The retiree, who lived on a 6,500 ruble monthly pension, was fined 10,000 rubles. Prominent dissident Mikhail Khodorkovsky said that Crimea should stay within Ukraine with broader autonomy. Tatarstan, a republic within Russia populated by Volga Tatars, has sought to alleviate concerns about treatment of Tatars by Russia, as Tatarstan is a gas rich and economically successful republic in Russia. On 5 March, President of Tatarstan Rustam Minikhanov signed an agreement on cooperation between Tatarstan and the Oksonov government in Crimea that implied collaboration between ten government institutions as well as significant financial aid to Crimea from Tatarstan businesses. On the 11th of March, Minikhanov was in Crimea on his second visit and attended as a guest present in the Crimean parliament chamber during the vote on the declaration of sovereignty pending the 16th of March referendum. The Tatarstan's Mufti Kamil Samagulan invited Crimean Tatars to study in madrasas in Kazan and declared support for their brothers in faith and blood. Mustafa Jemilev, a former leader of the Crimean Tatar Majlis believes that forces that are suspected to be Russian forces should leave the Crimean Peninsula, and has asked the UN Security Council to send peacekeepers into the region. On 13 March, Russian President Vladimir Putin made a comparison between Crimea and Kosovo in a phone call with US President Barack Obama. On 15 March, thousands of protesters estimates varying from 3,000 by official sources up to 50,000 claimed by opposition in Moscow Moscow marched against Russian involvement in Ukraine, many waving Ukrainian flags. At the same time a pro-government pro rally, occurred across the street, counted thousands as well officials claiming 27,000 with opposition claiming about 10,000. In February 2015, the leading independent Russian newspaper Novaya Gazeta reported that it obtained documents, allegedly written by oligarch Konstantin Malofayev and others, which provided the Russian government with a strategy in the event of Viktor Yanukovych's removal from power and the breakup of Ukraine, which were considered likely. The documents outline plans for annexation of Crimea and the eastern portions of the country, closely describing the events that actually followed after Yanukovych's fall. The documents also describe plans for a public relations campaign which would seek to justify Russian actions. In June 2015, Mikhail Kasyanov stated that all Russian Duma decisions on Crimea annexation were illegal from the international point of view and the annexation was provoked by false accusations of discrimination of Russian nationals in Ukraine. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> International response. There have been a range of international reactions to the annexation. The UN General Assembly passed a non-binding resolution 100 in favor, 11 against and 58 abstentions in the 193-nation assembly that declared invalid Crimea's Moscow-backed referendum. In a move supported by the Lithuanian president, the United States government imposed sanctions against persons they deemed to have violated or assisted in the violation of Ukraine's sovereignty. The European Union suspended talks with Russia on economic and visa-related matters, and is considering more stringent sanctions against Russia in the near future, including asset freezes, while Japan announced sanctions which include suspension of talks relating to military, space, investment, and visa requirements. The United Kingdom qualified the referendum vote in Crimea of being farcical, illegal, and illegitimate. The European Commission decided on the 11th of March to enter into a full free trade agreement with Ukraine within the year. On the 12th of March, the European Parliament rejected the upcoming referendum on independence in Crimea, which they saw as manipulated and contrary to international and Ukrainian law. The G7 bloc of developed nations, the G8 minus Russia, made a joint statement condemning Russia and announced that they would suspend preparations for the planned G8 summit in Sochi in June. NATO condemned Russia's military escalation in Crimea and stated that it was breach of international law while the Council of Europe expressed its full support for the territorial integrity and national unity of Ukraine. The Visegrad Group has issued a joint statement urging Russia to respect Ukraine's territorial integrity and for Ukraine to take into account its minority groups to not further break fragile relations. 
It has urged for Russia to respect Ukrainian and international law and in line with the provisions of the 1994 Budapest Memorandum, China said, "...we respect the independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine." A spokesman restated China's belief of non-interference in the internal affairs of other nations and urged dialogue. National Security Advisor Shivshankar Menon of India stated that Russia has legitimate interests in Crimea and called for sustained diplomatic efforts and constructive dialogue to resolve the crisis. However, the National Security Advisor is not a part of the Cabinet of India and, as such, Menon's statement was not an official statement issued by the Government of India. However, India subsequently made it clear that it will not support any unilateral measures against Russian government. India has never supported unilateral sanctions against any country. Therefore, we will also not support any unilateral measures by a country or a group of countries against Russia. Both Syria and Venezuela openly support Russian military action. Syrian President Bashar al Assad said that he supports Putin's efforts to restore security and stability in the friendly country of Ukraine", while Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro condemned Ukraine's ultra-nationalist coup. Sri Lanka described Yanukovych's removal as unconstitutional and considered Russia's concerns in Crimea as justified. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk called for change in EU energy policy as Germany's dependence on Russian gas poses risks for Europe. On the 13th of March, German Chancellor Angela Merkel warned the Russian government it risks massive damage to Russia economically and politically if it refuses to change course on Ukraine. Though close economic links between Germany and Russia significantly reduce the scope for any sanctions, after Russia moved to formally incorporate Crimea, some worried whether it may do the same in other regions. U.S. Deputy National Security Advisor Tony Blinken said that the Russian troops massed on the eastern Ukrainian border may be preparing to enter the country's eastern regions. Russian officials stated that Russian troops would not enter other areas. U.S. Air Force Gen. Philip M. Breedlove, NATO's supreme allied commander in Europe, warned that the same troops were in a position to take over the separatist Russian-speaking Moldovan province of Transnistria. On the 9th of April, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe deprived Russia of voting rights. On the 14th of August, while visiting Crimea, Vladimir Putin ruled out pushing beyond Crimea. He undertook to do everything he could to end the conflict in Ukraine, saying Russia needed to build calmly and with dignity, not by confrontation and war which isolated it from the rest of the world. United Nations resolutions Security Council resolution on 15 March 2014, a U.S.-sponsored resolution that went to a vote in the UN Security Council to reaffirm that Council's commitment to Ukraine's sovereignty, independence, unity and territorial integrity was not approved. Though a total of 13 Council members voted in favor of the resolution and China abstained, Russia vetoed the resolution. <laughs> General Assembly Resolution on 27 March 2014, the UN General Assembly approved a resolution describing the referendum leading to annexation of Crimea by Russia as illegal. The draft resolution, which was titled, Territorial Integrity of Ukraine, was co-sponsored by Canada, Costa Rica, Germany, Lithuania, Poland, Ukraine and the US. It affirmed the Council's commitment to the sovereignty, political independence, unity and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders." The resolution tried to underscore that the 16th of March referendum held in Crimea and the city of Sevastopol has no validity and cannot form the basis for any alteration of the status of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea or of the city of Sevastopol. The resolution got 100 votes in its favor, while 11 nations voted against and 58 countries abstained from the vote. The resolution was non-binding and the vote was largely symbolic. <laughs> <laughs> International recognition The vast majority of the international community has not recognized the Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol as part of Russia. 
Most nations in North America, Central America, Europe, Oceania, and Africa, as well as Asia outside of the former Soviet republics, have openly rejected the referendum and the accession, and instead consider Crimea and Sevastopol to be administrative divisions of Ukraine. The remainder have largely remained neutral. The vote on United Nations General Assembly Resolution 68 supporting the position that Crimea and Sevastopol remain part of Ukraine was 100 to 11 in favor, with 58 states abstaining and a further 24 of the 193 member states not voting through being absent when the vote took place. Afghanistan, Cuba, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Kyrgyzstan, Nicaragua, Sudan, Syria, and Zimbabwe have recognized the result of the 2014 referendum in Crimea. The position of Belarus is vague. It includes statements made by Alexander Lukashenko that Ukraine should remain an integral, indivisible, non-aligned state. And as for Crimea, I do not like it when the integrity and independence of a country are broken. On the one hand, and Today Crimea is part of the Russian Federation. No matter whether you recognize it or not, the fact remains. And whether Crimea will be recognized as a region of the Russian Federation de jure does not really matter. On the other hand, three non-UN member states recognized the results of the referendum, Abkhazia, South Ossetia, and Artsakh. A fourth, Transnistria, sent a request on 18 March 2014 to join the Russian Federation following the Crimean example and in compliance with the admission law provisions. On 16 April 2014 Transnistria urged Russia and the United Nations to recognize its independence. Putin is aware of Transnistria's recognition request, according to Dmitry Peskov. The Regional Council of Italy's northern region Lombardy has adopted a non-binding resolution on recognizing Crimea as part of Russia. The document also calls on the central government to work out a plan to lift the sanctions from Moscow, local news agency Il Giorno reports. Topic. Sanctions Sanctions were imposed to prevent Russian and Crimean officials and politicians traveling to Canada, the United States, and the European Union. They were the most wide-ranging used on Russia since the fall of the Soviet Union. Japan announced milder sanctions than the US and EU. These include suspension of talks relating to military, space, investment, and visa requirements. In response to the sanctions introduced by the US and EU, the Russian Duma unanimously passed a resolution asking for all members of the Duma to be included on the sanctions list. Head of the opposition A Just Russia Party Sergei Miranov said he was proud of being included on the sanctions list. It is with pride that I have found myself on the black list. This means they have noticed my stance on Crimea. Russian companies started pulling billions of dollars out of Western banks to avoid any asset freeze. Three days after the lists were published, the Russian Foreign Ministry published a reciprocal sanctions list of U.S. citizens, which consisted of ten names, including House Speaker John Boehner, Senator John McCain, and two advisors to President. Obama. The ministry said in the statement, treating our country in such way, as Washington could have already ascertained, is inappropriate and counterproductive, and reiterated that sanctions against Russia would have a boomerang effect. Several of those sanctioned responded with pride at their inclusion on the list, including John Boehner, John McCain, Bob Menendez, Dan Coates, Mary Landrieu, and Harry Reid. On 24 March, Russia has imposed retaliatory sanctions on 13 Canadian officials including members of the Parliament of Canada, banning them from entering Russia. Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird, said the sanctions were a badge of honor. Former Minister of Justice Erwin Kotler also said that he considered the sanctions a badge of honor, not a mark of exclusion. In March 2014, the Christian Science Monitor reported, The good news is that so far, Russia has shown no inclination to use the NDN as leverage in the wake of U.S. retaliation for its troop movements in Crimea. Expanded Western sanctions in mid-March coursed through financial markets, hitting the business interests of some Russia's richest people. The Americans centered on the heart of Moscow's leadership, though the EU's initial list shied from targeting Putin's inner circle. As ratings agencies Fitch and Standard & Poor's downgraded Russia's credit outlook, Russian banks warned of a sanctions-induced recession. The country braced for capital outflows for the first three months of 2014 to reach $70 billion, more than the entirety of outflows for 2013, and Russian government bond issues plummeted by three quarters compared with the same period the previous year. 
Novodik, Russia's second largest gas producer, saw $2.5 billion in market value wiped out when its shares sank by nearly 10%, rendering Putin's close friend Gennady Timchenko, who has a 23% stake in the company, $575 million poorer. I do hope that there is some serious diplomatic activity going on behind the scenes, said one Russian banker, though others were more sanguine on the question of whether the sanctions would have any enduring effect, and Russians, top and bottom, seemed defiant. The official Russian response was mixed. Minister of Economic Development of the Russian Federation Alexei Yulukayev said what introduction of sectoral sanctions will lead to a serious decline of the Russian economy, economic growth of Russia will become seriously negative, the growth of volumes of investment will be even more negative, inflation will be on the rise, and government revenues and reserves will go down, as well as differences between the United States and Europe as a whole as to how to respond to the Russian backed incursion. Those same differences have played out among East Eastern European countries, a number of Russian citizens reported that they have been denied European visas after they visited Crimea after annexation. A Russian consumer protection watchdog OZPP published a warning for Russian tourists about this risk, explaining that from the international law point of view Crimea is an occupied territory, after which Roskomnadzor blocked the OZPP website for threatening territorial integrity of Russian Federation. In response to having its voting rights revoked, Russia in June 2017 suspended its budget payments to the Council of Europe, with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov stating payments would not resume until all rights of Russia's delegation were fully restored. Council Secretary General Torbjorn Jagland has suggested to lift the sanctions to avoid the impact of mounting budgetary restraints. However, council members such as Ukraine and its supporters have argued that readmitting Russia without demanding concessions in return would amount to caving to Russian blackmail. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Mapping. As of March 2014, the United Nations still maps Crimea as belonging to Ukraine. National Geographic Society stated that their policy is to portray current reality and Crimea, if it is formally annexed by Russia, would be shaded grey." But also further remarked that this step does not suggest recognizing legitimacy of such. As of April 2014 Crimea is still displayed as part of Ukraine. As of April 2014, Google Maps displays Crimea as a disputed territory to most viewers. For the Russian and Ukrainian versions of website, Crimea is marked as belonging to corresponding country Russia or Ukraine respectively. Google stated that it works with sources to get the best interpretation of the border or claim lines. As of April 2014, Yandex displays Crimea as Russian, except for users entering from their Ukrainian site and their Turkish site. Users visiting Yandex.ru from Russia will see Crimea displayed as Russian territory. Users visiting Yandex.ua from Ukraine will see Crimea as Ukrainian and all other users from other countries will see Crimea as Russian territory. According to official statement, the company works with users from different countries and displays reality that surrounds them. As of March 2014, Bing Maps, OpenStreetMap and here display Crimea as belonging to Ukraine. In particular, OpenStreetMap requested its users to refrain from editing borders and administrative relations of subdivisions located in Autonomous Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol until 31 May 2014. On 5 June 2014 OpenStreetMap switched to a territorial dispute option, displaying Crimea as a disputed territory belonging to both countries. In 2015, on the PepsiCo website a Russian language map was visible for a few days that depicted Crimea as a part of Russia. The 2016 edition of a French atlas published by LaRousse shows Crimea as part of Russian territory. Ole Shamsher, Ukrainian ambassador to France, expressed shock. Shortly after, LaRousse corrected the mistake on the atlas on their internet version, and confirmed that Crimea is a region of Ukraine. The Italian language magazine of geopolitics Limes maps Crimea as a part of Russia since December 2015. After protests by the Ukrainian embassy in Italy, the magazine editor Lucio Caracciolo wrote that, The map reflects reality. When Crimea and Sevastopol will be back under effective Ukrainian sovereignty, we will produce a map that reflects such reality. Economic impact 
While initially right after the annexation, salaries rose, especially those of government workers, this was soon offset by the increase in prices caused by the depreciation of the ruble. Subsequently, after Russian authority became established, wages were cut back again by 30% to 70%. Tourism, previously Crimea's main industry, suffered in particular, it was down by 50% from 2014 in 2015. Crimean agricultural yields were also significantly impacted by the annexation. Ukraine cut off supplies of water through the North Crimean Canal, causing the 2014 rice crop to fail, and greatly damaging the maize and soybean crops. See also 1924 Estonian coup d'état attempt Simferopol incident Occupied territories of Georgia Reaction of Russian intelligentsia to the 2014 annexation of Crimea Russian irredentism Russian military intervention in Ukraine 2014 -present. Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Further reading Pinoniemi, Katri, Roch, Andras, eds. 2016. Fog of Falsehood, Russian Strategy of Deception and the Conflict in Ukraine. FIIA Report, 45. Helsinki, Finnish Institute of International Affairs. ISBN 978-951-769-485-8. ISSN 2323-5454. External links A Treaty of Accession of the Republic of Crimea and Sevastopol to the Russian Federation. Unofficial English translation with commentary Russia and me, former post-Soviet leaders' views on Crimea's annexation video 1121, ref, rl, 26 February 2016 in Russian, subtitles in English.